Thank you for joining today's webinar. My name is Viviana Valencia and I'm the Executive Coordinator at Caldo. Uh, for those of you who have been following the series studying Canada, this webinar closes that series and we're presenting today uh, our, our last presenter, which is uh, Université Laval. And in this series, we have invited uh, the graduate studies department or schools at each of our member of our 10 member universities. So they may have an opportunity to, uh, uh, to present about uh, their, their, their programs. So you may have an opportunity to learn about their institution, as well as to ask questions in relation to their academic requirements. Before we continue, um, I would like to request our audience, I would like to provide like a bit of uh, housekeeping, housekeeping items. Um, if you have questions uh, for our presenter, I will ask if you could use the Q&A box that is located at the bottom of your screen. That way our presenter can uh, answer those questions at the end of the session. And um, and another thing, if you can note your name in the event that we don't have enough time to answer all the questions, then we will have your name and we can then follow up with you later after the session. Uh, so before we, we start with, uh, with, with, today's, to, with today's presentation, I would like to take a couple of minutes just to introduce Caldo to those of you who are not familiar with the consortium. So Caldo is a consortium of 10 universities, uh, 10 Canadian universities. And these universities are uh, part of the U15, which uh, distinguish themselves from other Canadian universities because of their strong research focus. Our members consist of the 10 universities that you see on your screen, which are the University of Alberta, University of Calgary, Dalhousie University, uh, Université Laval, McMaster University, University of Ottawa, University of Saskatchewan, the University of Toronto, University of Waterloo, and Western University. Uh, for those of you who perhaps missed uh, the webinars with their previous uh, members, all of those you can find them on our website or on our YouTube channel. You can um, view those webinars later. So what are what what is Caldo? Like what do who we are and what do what do we do? So see it as a bridge, Caldo, see it as a bridge between you, the prospective graduate student, and our 10 member universities. So we connect you with our member universities and provide you guidance in the application process for graduate studies. Uh, some of the services that we offer is um, assistance with the steps to apply for graduate programs. Um, we can also provide you with information and tips on how to contact a supervisor. Um, we actually did a webinar last week on, on, on this topic, which also you may find it on, on our website. Uh, we also uh, provide information on uh, funding, the funding uh, programs that we have with uh, countries in Latin America, the countries in America that we work with. And I would just like to draw your attention to our website really quick. And on our website, you're going to find a lot of information and tools that you can use during your preparation uh, for, for graduate studies in Canada. You may find information, for example, about prospective students who are either uh, doing graduate studies in Canada at the moment or who completed their, their, their graduate programs. Um, that they, they will present, you know, the testimonials about their experiences. You can also find information, for example, in terms of equivalences between um, the GPA and, and what that translate, what, what, what your, your uh, grade translate into a GPA in Canada. Um, you may also find information about other events that we have had uh, in relation to graduate studies. If after you visit our website, you still have questions, we invite you to uh, complete this form that you're seeing right now on your screen and you're gonna find that as a pop-up on our website where you can um, provide us with more detail about your specific question, your name, where you're from, uh, the type of program that you're interested to apply in Canada and we can then go back to you with, with more information. Also, one thing before I forget and um, I always mention this, on our website, one of the tools that I found that is uh, very, very, very useful is a search engine 
where you can, for example, type the program that you're interested. Let's say if you're interested on doing a master's on, let's say, mechatronics, no? So you just type mechatronics, master's, and then we'll display all the partner universities, uh, I'm sorry, all the member universities that have that program. So in that, like with that, you can uh, find all the programs instead of going university to university, you can just come to a call the website and basically find the information of our 10 member universities. Uh, well, with this, I would like to introduce our, our, our guest today and that's Université Laval. And our guest today is Frederick Verret, who will be introducing you to uh, the University of Laval and the opportunities that they have there for you. Uh, Frederick, I will leave the floor to you now. Thank you. Thank you, Bibiana. Good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Frederic Verret. I am a student information specialist at Université Laval. So I'll be giving you a quick presentation of our university and then I'll be available to uh, answer any questions you might have about uh, our programs. So I'm gonna uh, start. Sorry, Frederick, we're not seeing your screen. Oh, you're, you're just gonna share the screen now? Okay. Yeah, I was gonna share it now. Okay, great, thank you. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can see the screen now. Do you want to okay. do that? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Here we go. Uh, so here's a quick presentation plan. So I'm going to quickly talk about Quebec City, where Université Laval is located. And then we'll go in the gritty of Université Laval, so general overview, our different programs, uh, which type of research we are renowned for, all the student services that are offered for international students. And finally, we're gonna talk about admission and the registration process. And I've mentioned a little bit about immigration. So uh, we are located in Quebec City. So Quebec City is uh, about a three hour drive from Montreal up north so, and we all, also about a five hour drive from Ottawa and Boston and about uh, eight to nine hours from Toronto and then New York City. Uh, oops, sorry, wrong way. So Quebec City is the capital of the province of Quebec. So we are more than uh, 750,000 inhabitants. We are a UNESCO World Heritage Site because we are one of the oldest cities in North America. So we, we were founded more than 400 years ago. So the, the old Quebec still has its uh, original charm. So it's more of a medieval look. So Quebec City is also a cultural and technological center. There's a lot of uh, businesses in the city. Uh, we have large green spaces, only a few minutes for the city center. So if you guys enjoy hiking or uh, during these uh, winter, you can go uh, skiing. So it's all uh, a very short drive from the city center. So Quebec City is, uh, according to travel and leisure, the best city in Canada. So and we've been at the top of that list for the past four years. It is also one of the safest cities in all of the country. Anyone could walk in old Quebec at three in the morning and it's perfectly safe. And finally, we have a high employment rate. So it's easy to find a job uh, after you graduate if you're ever interested in staying uh, in Canada. So we are the first French uh, language university in all of North America, and we are the second oldest in all of North America after Harvard. So I'm gonna show you a quick video that gives you an idea of the, um, uh, the university. So just give me a sec. Here we go. À l'origine de cet arbre centenaire, il y a la volonté de préserver nos ressources. 
À l'origine de cette volonté, il y a la forêt Montmorency, la plus grande forêt d'enseignement au monde. Il y a une vision porteuse du développement durable. À l'origine de ce regard confiant, il y a une meilleure compréhension du cerveau. À l'origine de cette compréhension, il y a un centre de recherche novateur en neurophotonique. Il y a une équipe de chercheurs passionnés. À l'origine de ce couple serein, il y a une retraite savamment planifiée. À l'origine de cette planification, il y a des heures de calcul mathématique. Il y a une école d'actuariat unique au Canada. À l'origine de ce succès, il y a un processus de réflexion et de création approfondie. À l'origine de ce processus, il y a des chercheurs et des artistes avides de création. Il y a un laboratoire audio numérique à la fine pointe de la technologie. À l'origine de cet honneur d'applaudissement, il y a une victoire en finale de championnat. À l'origine de cette victoire, il y a des étudiants athlètes qui ont soif de se surpasser. Il y a le plus grand complexe sportif universitaire de l'Est canadien. Et à l'origine de tant de réalisations, de réflexions, de percées, de talents, de victoires, il y a un acteur du progrès depuis 350 ans. So back to my presentation. Okay. Uh, so here's a list of some notable graduates that we've had in the last 350 years at Université Laval. We, uh, a lot of our former prime ministers graduated from Université Laval. So we have a few prime ministers of Canada, but also we have uh, two uh, Quebec premiers as well as six Canadian university rectors and seven Supreme Court of Canada um, uh, justices. So in Vesa Laval, uh, right now we're close, we're more than 43,000 students on, on campus and a quarter of those are at the graduate level, so masters and a PhD. So uh, of that number, we have around 7,000 international students uh, or permanent residents from uh, 120 different countries. So in Versailles Laval, it's 17 different faculties. When the university started 350 years ago, we only had four. We had uh, theology, medicine, law, and arts. So it's grew a lot since then. We have close to 500 different study, study programs and we have a lot of unique programs, either unique in French, unique in Quebec, or even unique in Canada. So there's a lot of offer, lots to offer at our university. We have 3,800 3, professors, lecturers, and teaching staff. Uh, what's interesting also, uh, one out of four students can have some sort of financial aid uh, during their studies. And it's mostly more interesting at the uh, graduate level and especially the PhD. I'll get into that a bit later on. And finally, in Vassalaval is ranked second in Canada for satisfaction of students uh, by uh, McLean's, which is a, a Canadian magazine. So we have over 300,000 graduates worldwide. Uh, our campus, it's uh, 1.8 uh, kilometers square, uh, and it's a, a green campus. I think around 65% of the campus is green spaces. Though that, that's uh, something interesting, especially during the summertime. So between classes, you can go take a walk in the woods and you're not even leaving the, uh, the university campus. And we are the first Canadian university uh, that is carbon neutral. Uh, we have more than 40 different buildings uh, on campus. So it's really a North, uh, North American style campus. So everything is uh, walkable distance. And what's interesting for you guys, all of our uh, buildings are connected by uh, underground tunnels. So that's interesting, especially during the winter time. Uh, you can go between classes or if you're living in our campus residences, you don't even have to step outside. 
So this is just to show you an example of our trading rooms at our uh, faculty of business administration. We have two trading rooms in that faculty. This is more of a regular classroom that you'll find in our other uh, faculties. Our different laboratories. Uh, almost all the buildings have public spaces. So if you wanna take a break and study, have lunch, so there, that's all available. And what's interesting is the Wi-Fi for, for students, it's free and it's available all around campus. So concerning our programs, so like I said, we offer more than 500 study programs in all areas of knowledge. And we have close to 260 in graduate programs. So you can see on the screen, we offer pretty much everything. So health sciences, sciences, technology and engineering, forest sciences and agriculture. And in that domain, we have a lot of unique programs you won't find anywhere else in Quebec and sometimes in Canada. Uh, we have a lot of programs in social sciences, humanities, political sciences, economics. We have a faculty of law education, administrative sciences, and arts, literature, and languages. Uh, we offer, well, that's more at the undergraduate level. We have 90% of our bachelor's degree usually include a um, mandatory or optional uh, internship, as well as our different profiles. The one being the more uh, popular is our international that allow students to go spend one semester abroad in another country. So even for international stu students as yourselves who come to do a bachelor's degree uh, at Université Laval, you are also allowed to do a semester abroad as long as it's not in your home country. So we have agreements with uh, 520 institutions uh, all around uh, the world. So there's a lot of uh, to offer. We also are ranked in the top 10 of the, ber the best uh, research university in all of Canada. Why? Well, we have over close to 300 different research centers, chairs, and institutes. Uh, we are one of the very few, uh, if not the only one in Canada that has four different uh, um, Canada Excellence uh, Research Chairs. Uh, we invest more than 350 million in research funds. Annually, we received uh, recently a $98 million um, uh, grant from the Canadian government for our uh, Sentinel North project. And there, we have a lot of numer numerous affiliated research institutions. So this is just to give you a quick idea of uh, what are our major research projects uh, right now at Université Laval. So the, there's a lot concerning uh, everything with uh, health sciences. So the Alliance Santé Quebec, that's one of them. Uh, we have the International Observatory on Societal Impacts of our Artificial Intelligence and Digital Technology. And our Alliance Culture Numérique uh, that encourages stakeholders uh, to join forces by bringing together organization business with a common interest in developing projects uh, in uh, that link culture and digital uh, technology. Uh, Sentinel North, I mentioned a few minutes ago concerning optics and photonics as well as, as uh, health and the Institut Nordique du Québec. So we do a lot of research up north uh, in the, in the, of uh, the province. As I mentioned, we have four Canada Excellent Research Chairs, so I'm not gonna go into details. This is not my, uh, my expertise. Uh, if you ever have any questions, I can send you, uh, give you the, the right contacts. We also have a lot of research centers that are renowned worldwide. So uh, for one, our Center for Optics, Photonics and Lasers. Uh, we have the, the biggest uh, research center in that field in all of Canada. Also, we, all, we are uh, world renowned, renowned in our uh, Nutraceuticals and Functional Foods Institute. 
Our Centre Apprentice in uh, Health Sciences Complex is more for the uh, undergraduates in, in those faculties. So it's a way to learn by uh, simulation. For those interested in more of uh, image, sound and stage uh, technologies, our Lantis is uh, world renowned as well. Uh, and finally, I'll just mention the Institut de Québec en Environnement, Développement et Société, which uh, works on five different themes, so water, biodiversity, climate changes, cities and territories, and governments. Okay, let's move on to student services. So you can find basically everything on campus. So the only thing that's not available directly on campus is the pharmacy, but the, you can take a 10 minute walk and we have uh, three um, big uh, shopping centers right next to the campus. So you'll find a pharmacy, pharmacy there. So otherwise you have access to, we have two libraries, one scientific and one for social sciences, a medical clinic if you ever get sick. We have uh, personal and professional orientation. We have four camp, uh, student residences on campus. Uh, we have uh, we offer different social cultural activities uh, mainly by our student life office a lot of sported, sportive activities as well scholarship uh, employment uh, services and then as I mentioned free Wi-Fi on campus so our um, sports center is the largest uh, sports center in all of uh, Eastern Canada so you have to go to Toronto to get to find a bigger one than ours. So what's interesting for you is when you are a full time student, you have free access to our complex. So we have two Olympic size swimming pools, two ice rinks, an indoor football stadium, as well as an outdoor uh, stadium and also indoor uh, athletic tracks. Also, if you uh, like tennis or badminton, volleyball, it's all available for you guys. We also have uh, 14 different uh, varsity teams that we call Rouge et Or. So if you, any of you guys are uh, practice sports on a professional level, it's always possible to join one of our teams. Uh, so as I mentioned, our student and life office they offer a lot of uh, different activities to facilitate your integration on campus. So welcome services when you arrive on campus. They offer visits uh, of the campus, vis uh, Quebec City um, visits as well. Uh, a lot of different activities during the year. For example, during the uh, spring, you can go uh, at the Sugar Shack. Also uh, during the um, the fall semester, you can go to uh, Ile d'Orléans to pick up some uh, some strawberries. So, which I encourage you guys to participate in those activities. It'll simply facilitate your integration to uh, life in Quebec City. So, when you are admitted into our program, you will have access to their International Students Handbook that has a lot of information uh, interesting for uh, for you guys. And finally, it's a, you, are, you can access to some different conferences on topics such as adapting to a new culture, an introduction to uh, Quebec culture, and so forth. So, as I mentioned, we are a, friend, a Francophone university. So uh, most of our programs are given in French. However, at the master and especially the PhD level for programs in uh, pure sciences, engineering, um, health sciences, you usually don't have that many courses to follow and you are allowed to do your research and write your thesis in English. So, but also for those that are willing to learn French, which I encourage you as well, we have offered different workshops at our School of Language so that, and even get some financial support uh, to learn it. 
So this is to give you an idea of the budget for a, uh, graduate programs. So you will see that either if you're doing your research masters or a professional masters, there's a, a small difference in price. So per year, we're looking at, uh, well, close to $15,000 Canadian. Uh, while at the doctoral level, all international students will have access to an exemption uh, scholarship, which means you only pay the, you will pay the same thing as a Quebec student. So it's $3,000 a year. So that's very interesting for you uh, students. Also, if you look a bit um, lower in, in the, uh, the slide, you will see you know, how much to, uh, to have. So for health and hospital insurance that we offer at Universal Laval, it's 900 a year. Uh, also, so basically per year, so the last line on the, in my slide, so it's close to 30,000 for a master's and uh, 16,000 for the PhD. Here are the different steps for admission and the registration uh, process. So I'll go a little more in detail in the next few slides, but just for your information, uh, look at the bottom, the application deadline, that's something important. So if you're looking for an admission for fall semester, so let's say as a, to start in September of 2021, it's highly encouraged that you apply before February 1st. If you're looking for the winter semester, it's not too late if you want to start uh, in January, but you'd have to apply before September 1st. And then we have some programs that are available in the summer semester, then you have to apply before January 15th. So for first step, of course, it's to find the different program that will interest you. So uh, obviously to, to be a, ad, admissible for a master's program, you have to have an undergraduate degree. So a bachelor's degree or licence or uh, something similar. And for the PhD program, you have to have the equivalent of the uh, master's degree. So of course there are specific requirements all depending on the program. So I invite you to go to our website and check the, uh, the section on the, our programs. Uh, step two, if you are interested into a research-based program, so a research master's or a PhD, most likely you will have to find your research supervisor before you are admitted. So this is just an idea. And I invite you to have more detail. You can go at the uh, following address, which is ulaval.ca slash your project. So you'll have more uh, information and tips on how to contact our research uh, professors. So once you've found a uh, research supervisor, then you can apply online. So the uh, application, you go to ulaval.ca slash admission. So our online form is only in French at the moment, but there are, is also an English PDF form for those of you who do not uh, understand French at the moment. And then depending on the program, of course you have to send in all of your um, transcripts at, at the uh, undergraduate level and diplomas. And depending on the program, probably you'll have to send your resume and motivation letter and sometimes reference letters. Right now, the application fee that you can pay online with a credit card, it's uh, $89.50 uh, Canadian. And after that, once you have opened your uh, your file, you'll be able to track your application there and ultimately accept your admission offer and register for your classes. Uh, so for financial funds, as I mentioned, the most interesting uh, scholarship we have is for PhD students. So all students will pay the same tuition fees as a Quebec student. Um, citizens, uh, at the master's level, also, we have the Citizens of the World Excellence uh, Scholarship. 
uh, it's only a few scholarships per faculty. So, and ultimately they decide who will get the scholarship. For more information, I suggest you contact the faculty directly. But it's still an interesting um, grant. As you can see, it's 20,000 uh, total, so 10,000 per year. And then depending on the program for research studies, you ha all have access to graduate studies awards and the amount depends on the faculty. And also obviously depending on your research supervisor, he can have different grants or uh, scholarships available. And it's also, a, you may be able to give a course during your, um, your program or find a job either on campus or off campus. So you can find more information on financial resources at the web link at the top of the page. Uh, finally, so once you are admitted into a program, then you have the immigration procedures to follow. So you will see at the bottom of the page, the link, uh, slash immigration. That site is actually, it's in French, English, and I think even Spanish. So, I encourage you to go read that page, but basically you have two documents to get. You have to first get the CAQ, the Certificat d'Acceptation du Québec, so from the province's uh, requirement. And once you get the CAQ, then you apply for the Canadian study permit. So you have to, it's about, for the whole process, it's four to six months. So that's why it's important to respect the application deadlines. So that's all I wanted to share with you today. You have there my information. If you ha ever have any further questions, don't hesitate to, uh, to write. You can also uh, connect to our info letter and uh, make sure to check our websites. Thank you very much, Frederick. Uh, we're going to continue now with a question and answer period. Uh, just give me one second. I would just like to share my screen again. So also the, the participants, the audience has our contact information. Just give me one second here. Um, you should be able to see now my screen. Okay. So uh, th thank you, Frederick. That was uh, uh, a lot of information, very detailed information, which is great. And now if you would like, let me just go to the Q&A session. Yeah. Section, I'm sorry. And um, so in terms of language programs, um, uh, I'm sorry, in terms of the language requirements, you mentioned that uh, for master's and PhD, even though there are a couple of courses uh, for, for the program, uh, the, the courses are in French, meaning uh, applicants are required to provide a, a official a test for, for to, to prove their proficiency in the French uh, language, if they're applying for either master's or PhD? Yeah, uh, as, especially for the programs in social sciences, arts, and humanities. So yeah, they will ask for a French requirement where it's less important, uh, especially at the PhD level. So for pure sciences, engineering, health science, sciences, they don't have any classes to follow. It's only their research. So that's why French is not required for those programs. Okay. So, but it, 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 of course it can depend on the specific program. So that's why I invite the students to uh, go on a website and check the exact program that interests them. Great, thank you very much, Eric. And also just to complement um, this information, if you're interested on, on, on learning French at Laval, uh, the, the university participated in a webinar, I believe it was last week or the week prior, you're gonna find that webinar on our website as well and on our YouTube channel and on the different programs to learn French that Laval offers and as well as the scholarship. So if you're interested, and I strongly, strongly recommend for you to take advantage of, of that opportunity, because if you're thinking to come into Canada uh, to study a Laval or just to live in Canada, uh, knowing French will open a lot of doors for you professionally. Um, so the next question, um, 
uh, Frederick. If yeah. you can provide us a little more information, this is from Ghislaine. So Ghislaine is interested on in doing a co to tell uh, uh, Laval, and I believe her university has an agreement with with uh, Laval Université. Could you provide more information of where of where Ghislaine can find um, the details of how to apply for for a co to tell with Laval? Okay, uh, that's a very good question. Uh, just uh, I know there's a link somewhere on our website because basically for a coach tell, if I, if I'm not mistaken you have to be admitted in both programs. So the one in their home country and the one at Universe Laval. And also they have to find two research supervisors. So one from Universe Laval and one from their country. So I'd say what I recommend, the first step would be to find their, uh, their research supervisor at Universe Laval and then go from there. But okay. But I have a link for the code to tell. I th however, I think it's only in French. But I can put it uh, in. Do I put it in Q and R or? Uh? Yeah, yeah. If you want in the Q and A, um, there's a way there to type the answers. If you can just copy the, the link and and is the first question from Ghislaine Costa. That way, yes, yeah, she'll have the the information and she can uh, uh, do the follow up. Um, well, while you do uh, not in the link, I would like to ask another question because I see here. So, uh, for the English, so students, prospective students, uh, the graduate level, uh, do they only need to provide proof of French, or do they also need to provide proof of English requirements? Uh, once again, it, it depends on the program. Okay. For re especially for research programs, usually you have to send proof of English because a lot of articles that you're going to read and even write, they will be in English. So, mm -hmm. of course, you have to have a workable uh, knowledge of English as well. So, yeah, it's best to, to, to send in both a, a test scores of French and English. Right, thank you. Thank you, Farouk. Another question from Jonathan. Um, so about the scholarships that you mentioned, do all master students receive, uh, well, do all master and PhD students receive the, the scholarships that you mentioned at the, at the beginning, which I believe was for, for masters was 10,000, the equivalent of $10,000 year, yearly? And for PhD, I'm sorry, I forgot the amounts, but are basically do all selected applicants will receive the, those scholarships or is there um, uh, basically a, a selection, selection process and only some would receive the, the scholarship? Okay, so uh, concerning the uh, Citizens of Excellence uh, Scholarship, uh, there is a selection. As I mentioned, there's only a few scholarships available per faculty. So yeah, not everybody will have it. Uh, what's, it's at the PhD level that all international students will get the exen exemption scholarship. I think it's over, the students will save up to $42,000 at the end of the, uh, the PhD, but that's every student uh, gets it. Thank you, Frederick. And um, honestly, that's a, those are very generous scholarships. Um, also, just in scholarships, I'd just like to provide a little more information about the, the scholarships that our audience can access through the agreements that Caldo has with uh, the countries that we operate in in Latin America. And for example, from Brazil, we have agreements with CAPES and CMPK, with Chile, uh, with the NEED, Colombia, Menciencias, Ecuador, Senesi. Mexico, Conacit, Panama, Senesi, uh, Paraguay, Becal, Peru, Pronavec, and Uruguay, Ani. Um, so the next question, uh, Frederick, will be in terms of payments. Do you know if uh, prospective students will be required to pay on a yearly, meaning um, one lump sum for the year, or do they pay every, every term, every semester? How do they normally cover the tuition? What's the, the, the temporality of, of their payments? They will pay every uh, semester. Every semester. So I just want to add, usually it's two uh, um, mandatory sessions, semester, so the fall and the winter. However, for research-based programs, you may have to be 
registered full time at the summer semester as well. So uh, of course that depends on the program as well, but it may be possible that you have to be registered for the three semesters uh, per year. Thank you, Farouk. And um, another question, I don't know if you would like to share your screen, um, let me know, Farouk, and I can, I can stop sharing my screen so you can provide this information. Yeah. It, um, so, so the students have questions in terms of the requirements, and I know those vary from program to program, perhaps faculty to faculty. So is there a link where they can find information about the program that they're seeking, like a particular program, so they can see the deadlines, the, the academic requirements, and, and the information that, that they will need to, to know in order to apply? Uh, yeah, there is. Uh, well, maybe, I, unfortunately, the specific information on our study programs, it's only in French, but I can still show you where to go. Sure. So, Let me just stop sharing my screen right now. Hold on a second. There we go. Okay. And also, I'd like to remind our audience that this webinar is being recorded and you will receive it later. Um, so if at any point you need to go back and, and check the information that Farrick uh, provided, you may be able to do so later. So if I go to, I simply click ulaval.ca. So there, part of our um, website has been translated. So if you see here on your left, we have English and Spanish, especially for the, uh, if I switch to English right now. So for the future students uh, section of our website, it has been translated as well as the immigration part. But if I switch to academics here, uh, it's gonna be it's here. You can see, see all programs, but it, you will be switched back to the uh, French site. So let's just say, take one example, the doctorate, um, PhD in actuarial sciences. So if you click here, if you want to see the uh, program requirements, you click here on official description. And here you'll have all the information on what you need, uh, which documents you have to send and usually the uh, application uh, deadlines. But yeah, that you can always Google and translate those pages if, uh, if you don't master French. Thank you, Farik. Now that you're there, um, so there's another question about the information you mentioned on how to contact supervisors. Is there a link or is it just an email address that they should write to? No, no there is a link. So it's, if I type it, it's you Laval dot ca slash your project so that one has been translated so here you have different tips on how to contact professors but here uh, you have a link for our different research groups and chairs and also some uh, professors are actively looking for international for um, for students so here you will, have, you will have different uh, available projects. So if I just click on the first one, if this program interests you, well, you have at the bottom of the page, uh, the name of the professor and you can contact them directly. Otherwise, if I just go back to uh, my PhD in uh, actuarial sciences, if I go back to here, Présentation Générale, you will, have, you will have here Recherche dans le domaine, so domain, domain research. And usually you'll have either a link for the school, so you'll have a list of the professors, or you, you basically just have a full list of professors here. So those are like the two ways to find your uh, research supervisor. Thank you very much, and uh, Frederick. And also, uh, I think I mentioned this before, but uh, you may also visit our, I mean, view our, our, our webinar about uh, uh, how to contact supervisor um, for tips and more information in terms of the etiquette on, on, on how, how to send, you know, those first emails. Um, Frederick, another question is in terms of the documents that they need to submit for, for an application. 
Um, do they need to submit? Because obviously everything needs to be translated uh, into either French or English. Is, is there a preference? They have an, any option in terms of the language that the documents need to be translated to when applying to Laval? Actually, we accept official documents in French, English, and even Spanish. Okay. That, that's great to know. So, so no official translation is required for those three languages. If it's another language, for example, Portuguese, unfortunately, yeah, you'll have to have it translated. Great. That saves um, time and money. For exactly. Sure. Mm -hmm. Respect to students. That's great. Um, okay. Uh, with this, we will close this, se this section for, for Q&A. Uh, Frederick, would you like to add something um, for our audience? Uh, the only thing I suggest is go, if I, I'm still sharing my screen. Yes, you are. So go read up on the first uh, tab here, future students. You'll have a lot of different information. And I, like I said, this section is both, it's in French, English, and even Spanish. And if you ever have any questions, well, you can, don't hesitate to either write to me or here at the bottom of the page, you have info at ulaval.ca. So that's probably the quickest way to get an answer from one of our specialists. Thank you very much, Frederick, and thank you, our audience, for joining us today. I would also like to remind you that um, uh, if for some reason you're not able to, to, to contact Laval or to get the information that you, that you need, you can also send us an email and we'll be happy to connect you with, uh, with Laval Université. And I also would like to remind you that um, this, this month we'll have other webinars that you might be interested in. Uh, for example, we're going to have a panel with current students uh, in Canada, international graduate students in Canada, that will speak about their experience of being an international student in, in Canada. Um, and other, other web, very interesting webinars for, for you as well. So with this, uh, we will, we're closing the series of a study in Canada. Uh, and thank you very much, Frederick, for, for your time. And to our audience, I hope to see you again next week or with our next webinar. Have a great afternoon, everyone.